Welcome to Creeping It Real. I am Judah. This week, we get to visit another masterpiece from the 80s. In fact, not just the 80s, but 1986, which also gave us the masterpiece Spookies. Now, this movie that we're about to review does not have the same amount of drama surrounding the production as Spookies does, but the movie is much better. Let's just start off by watching this trailer. And, uh... Intellectual decay! Yeah. Turn it off and watch your brain! The Paramans are just a typical American family. The only thing they're missing is a pet. But have we got a surprise for them? You see, Stanley Putterman's new satellite TV has just gone on the blink. And it's drawn in a creature from outer space. Like all new pets, this one's causing a little trouble around the house. And he's eating the Puttermans out of house and home. In fact, it seems like this creature will eat anything. Well, just about anything. She looked right at my studs and cooled out. This dude's into metal! Now, it's up to the kids to break the creature of its bad habits. I said shut up! But he's not responding well to discipline. Earth children, please. I mean you no harm. I am Pluthar, here to save you. Pluthar. The Puttermans finally got themselves a pet, but they never even had a chance to give it a name. Terror Vision from Empire Pictures. All I can say is watch this movie yourself. I don't know if it's worth your time. This is like one of the campiest movies. It's far, it has an actual storyline. Unlike Spookies, which is just like, what the heck? And the acting is so horrible in Spookies. This one, it's, it's overacted. It's so cartoony. Which brings me to the question, who, again, who was this movie made for? It is so cartoony. It's so Scooby-Doo-ish that you assume that it has to be made for kids. But the weird thing is, when you watch this movie, there is no way this movie was made for kids. The parents are flat-out swingers. They have a teenage daughter, and the teenage daughter's like, hey, I want to bring over my boyfriend. And the mom's all like, well, you can't because your father and I are going to be swinging tonight. And I was just like, wait, what? I look at Jacob, and I was like, did they just say... They're going to be swinging. And he's like, yeah. And they unashamedly in front of their two children. And I guess if that's going to be your lifestyle, then I guess you have to be open about it with your kids. But they live with their <laughs> the father, the grandfather, and, the, and their two kids. So they're, they're doing the swinging th thing in the presence of all of them. The whole house it's just all the walls, the statue. The walls are covered with uh, illustrations of naked women. Uh, the statues have got like water squirting out of the nipples. They have a massive hot tub. It, it's a swinger pad completely. But there is a portion that the grandpa, who is like a, an old timer from, uh, you know, he, he obviously has some kind of military background. And he lives in a bunker. And obviously the grandpa is like the, the little son's hero because the son is all, you know, kind of gun-ho, you know, war type stuff as well. <laughs> my, let, me, let me show you one of my favorite scenes. <laughs> this little kid jumps out from behind this bush, you know, has a fake machine gun obviously has the orange tip and everything and he points it at his grandpa and he's like ah grandpa and his grandpa pulls out a real handgun a real handgun and points it at his grandson 
finger on trigger in everything. I mean, the, it wasn't even just like, I'll pull out the gun, finger not on trigger. He pulls out a real gun, points it directly at his grandson with trigger on finger. Let me show you this. this I, I, it cracks me up so much. I like there is no orange tip. Look at this. Look at this. Freaking real gun right at a kid. <laughs> what the what the heck? That's this is what kind of movie it is. These parents are so horrible. <laughs> this alien comes. Um Ethan ends up killing the grandpa. Grandpa was the first de death, I think. It kills the satellite repair guy. I think he was the second death. But whenever somebody gets killed at this point, nobody nobody knows. And then this monster can... He has this special tentacle that can mimic the the faces of the people that it has devoured. So it eats the grandpa, it hides in the bunker, and it tricks the little boy into thinking his grandpa's still alive. As I mentioned, the mom said that her and her husband were going to be swinging at night. They come back with a couple. They're showing them around the house. <laughs> uh, the woman that they bring home gets into the hot tub uh, then it cuts to uh, the husband's all like, ooh, I'm going to get ready. He's getting all, I don't know, you know, bungee smuggler on and putting on his bathrobe with some gold chains. And he's like, yeah, I get to have sex with somebody that's not my wife and my wife is okay with it. So he's all excited about this. But the wife and the dude that they brought home are off like getting some drinks together. Uh, at this point, the guy they brought home uh, reveals that he's interested in uh, the husband the most. And he asks the wife if he can take it like a man. This is definitely, this is a kid's movie. Does he take it? Does, can he take it like a man? This, this is what he asks. Uh, she, <laughs> then her husband comes in. He's all excited. He wants to get this orgy going. And uh, the wife says to the stranger, well, why don't you go to the hot tub? I need to talk to my husband. Then she reveals to him that the dude, you know, is really interested in him. And he's like, oh, no, no, that's not happening in my house. No, no slur word is going on in my house. <laughs> You're the swingers, and yet somehow he's going to have the moral high ground. Uh, so the dude goes to the hot tub. He sees the chick is already in there, but you only see her from the head up. So you're going to be like, mm, something's weird is going on here. Also, the pool seems a little odd. Dude jumps in and he's like, oh, this, and he has an accent. He's like, oh, it's so uh, interesting. And he's like, you can see it's all slimy and everything. And it's so weird because he goes, oh, maybe this is the sexual lubrication you know and it's like i don't know the way he was so very specific and precise the way he said that i mean i could maybe hear somebody being like oh it might be the sex lube but he was like the sexual lubrication it was so hilarious so obviously we find out that the chick that was in the hot tub she got killed by the monster next uh the he was very specific in saying that he was greek and liked boys so then greek man dies i mean what's well, one less pedo I, I, that's all i'm saying then somehow the parents they get killed and again nobody knows nobody's ever seen this then the girl the the daughter comes back with her boyfriend od a metal guy you saw him which by the way od plays Uncle Rico in Napoleon Dynamite. So they're looking for the parents. They knock on the bedroom door. They open the door. 
not not OD, but the two kids. And the bed is just like moving and everything. And <laughs> one at a time, heads start popping up at the top of the sheets. So we got the parents and we got the two strangers. And the kids are horrified. And moms are like, don't judge us. We do our thing and you do your thing. And they're all like, oh, gross. And they're like, have you seen grandpa? And I said to Jake, I was like, the only thing that could make this better is if suddenly the grandpa's head pops up. And bingo, on cue, grandpa's head pops up. And he's like, just getting things done. Something, some kind of catchphrase, something he says. And we're all just like, ew. You, can you imagine being so, walking in on your parents in an orgy, one. And then grandpa, finding out grandpa's involved? Oh my gosh. Kill me now. Kill me now. So they close the door. They think their parents and their grandpa are fine. They're just doing their thing in their bedroom. The kids end up coming across the monster. And uh, the monster is coming after them. But then because OD has got like his Metal Gear on and stuff, uh, the monster sees it and it reminds him of his caretaker. So he doesn't kill them. Now the kids start, it, it's really weird. It like switches from this thing, this monster killing people to suddenly the kids are like teaching it how to talk and teaching it about food, you know, things like that. It, it gets very like E.T.-ish, which they even reference. And uh, Odie is like, yeah, this is like that movie, you know, that, that one with the alien and the kid and, uh, you know, the one that made you cry like a butthole. This makes me laugh because I remember in the 80s, like, butthole being a big thing but it does make me laugh that you know crying crying at a movie makes you a butthole at this point the monster loses it kills od oh side note when grandpa and the the grandchild the boy are, are chilling out before the monster starts killing they're sitting down watching old horror movies black and white horror movies that has a host that's you know somewhat elvira-ish but she's called medusa and she's, you know, she's got the snaky hairs and she's got the massive boobies that are just, that are so pushed up, so massively pushed up that they curve up and they, they fold back. That's how much they're pushed up. Anyway, so this little kid, for some reason, thinks that Medusa, you know, she knows about monsters. He calls her hoping that she'll have some kind of insight and can help, help him. And she just treats him like a total, like, loser. Why this kid was watching this TV host. Does in, do any of you remember the USA Up All Night? Like, definitely not something I should have been watching. Gilbert Godfrey did one day, and um, some chick named Rhonda. Anyway, she had massive boobs as well. And it's like, kids should not be watching this. But So that was like the levelist of this thing. And this Medusa, she's talking almost like it's a 1-900 number to the viewers and she has a segment of the show where people get to call in so this kid calls in and wants her help and she's like oh forget it I, i'm you're just a lunatic he has also called the cops several times and they have threatened to arrest him for lying the son is like well let's try medusa one more time she answers phone she's like look kid the show's over i'm busy i'm tired and now it's just time for me to go potty i said party not potty She's still not believing him. And then the sister grabs the phone and she's like, hey, this is a sister. And then suddenly Medusa's like, oh, I should have paid attention. And she, but then she's still like, look, I'm, I got things to do. And the sister's like, well, we're going to have a party. Why don't you come to our party? And she's like, sorry, kid. And she hangs up the phone. She doesn't get an address, but somehow she ends up at their home later on the cops show up he's all like we're here to arrest you for making prank calls obviously the cop gets killed things are going crazy some other humanoid alien shows up he's in a, a space suit because he can't breathe our atmosphere he's like hey kids here's a situation i'm not here to hurt you but that monster that's actually my pet they're very loving but when they mutate and they start going on a feeding frenzy they're almost unstoppable. So I'm here to help you. And I said to Jacob before this happened, I said, the way things are going, this movie is so goofy. I was like, how, what do you think the chances are that there's going to be somehow the alien is going to, the, this humanoid alien is going to be able to separate all the people out of the monster alien? 
and, and uh, restore them. I was like, because right now, these two kids have no family whatsoever. I was like, so what, what's your thoughts on this? And he was like, I don't know. So then this humanoid alien says, and we can extract your parents. And I looked at him and I said, see, I, I knew it. I was like, this movie is too goofy to end with the parents being dead and these kids having no one. So they're talking to this humanoid alien. And then who shows up? Medusa. She lets herself in. She sees this humanoid alien, remembers all the conversations that she's having with the kids earlier. And she's like, oh, no, there's the alien. She grabs something and busts this alien right in the head, breaks the, uh, his mask. The atmosphere is leaking in or leaking out. Anyway, he can't breathe anymore. And his brain, his head just explodes. And I was like, oh, that was unexpected. Then the monster alien busts through the wall. And there's this big end sequence, kills the two kids, the daughter and the son, and kills Medusa. The movie ends with Medusa's chauffeur being asleep out in her car. And you think, Medu well, you know it's not Medusa because she comes in and her face is all slimy. Medusa comes in and she's like, hey, let's go back to the studio, pronto. But then it pans back and you see that it's the monster. So this movie ended with literally everyone dying except for the chauffeur, except he may, you know, you know, he's probably going to die. And knowing that she's going to the TV studio, which this is how the monster gets around. So he now has access to worldwide domination. So everyone dies. The whole world is doomed. But this movie is so super goofy. If you love campy movies, you need to see this. This is absurd. And the practical effects are amazing. They're actually done by John Carl Beekler, who, by the way, did the practical effects for Carnosaur, which we reviewed um, several weeks ago. He also directed Troll and did the special effects for Troll, which, by the way, Troll and Terrorvision were filmed back to back in Italy. And uh, Terrorvision was filmed first, and most of the crew stayed there in, on for Troll, and they filmed that. This was directed by Ted Nicolaus. Nicolas? I don't know how to say his last name. Ted and the production uh, designer, they actually went and visited a bunch of homes of swingers in L.A. And they based the home of the Puttermans on, on the homes that they visited of these actual swingers. If this is how swingers decorate their houses, I, I don't, it's, they're a different kind of people, let me tell you. Another thing, which is not uncommon back then anyway, is studios would just come up with poster designs. No script, no story. They would just come up with a poster and they would take it to investors and be like, hey, do you want to invest in this movie? And then they make up some baloney stuff and people would invest based off of this poster. The poster for Terrorvision was designed before there was any script written for Terrorvision. The gross that it took in was $320,000 and some change. $300 and $20,000. And it was pulled from theaters. Who did I say that? The eaters in only four days. So that's, it was going that great. After four days, they pulled it. This is a bad movie, but it's like, it, it's literally one of those so bad it's good, but you got to watch it with somebody. The practical effects are amazing. I mean, the design is, of it is goofy. It definitely seems like a, a kid's Saturday morning uh, cartoon type of a thing. But it looks really well. Uh, this thing has this crazy tongue. It, I mean, bravo for sure to John Beckler. Uh, he did a great job on this one. I definitely would recommend it. The score is going to be so hard to give on this. For pure hilariousness... And insanity, I'm going to give it a seven. But for a horror movie, a serious horror movie, we're looking at three, four. But if you just, if you enjoy insane 
80s campy horror. This one, this one's a good one. I, I would highly recommend it. Definitely get some friends with you that enjoy the same type of goofiness and watch this thing. It's, it's a good time. It, you're definitely, there's tons of just uh, what the heck moments. You don't understand what is up, up with these parents. You don't know who this movie was made for. It's crazy. There's so many stupid things. Oh, but also the daughter in this movie. Um, she played the foreign exchange student in Better Off Dead, that John Cusack movie, which is one of my favorite non-horror movies. I, I love Better Off Dad, Better Off Dead, but it's, it's well known that John Cusack hates that movie, which is a bummer because it, to me, is just so hilarious. But, uh, think, thinking age appropriately, I was quite young when better off dead came out and because it would back then better off dead would have been almost comparable to say like a american pie type of a deal so there is no way that me in my uh christian upbringing were going to be watching that as an eight-year-old or a 10-year-old so i probably didn't watch it until i was like 13 or something so think age appropriately for one, but I had a massive crush on this girl that played the foreign exchange student and plays the daughter in this movie. Massive crush. I thought she was so cute. And I already mentioned that uh, OD is uh, Uncle Rico, who is also in a lot of other movies. He was um, he was the Wolfman in Monster Squad as well. The dude, I I didn't. He was never really in the forefront of my brain until I saw Napoleon Dynamite <clears throat> because I really enjoyed that movie. I know some people hate it, and I know that there's a great amount of people who really like it. I was one of those people who really liked it. It was so embarrassing and so uncomfortable to watch, though, but I still enjoyed it. And that's when I took note of Uncle Rico. And then as I started watching other movies back from the 80s and stuff, I was like, man, this guy was in a ton of stuff. So good for him. This was this was an enjoyable, goofy movie. I highly recommend it. Uh, thanks for watching. And I think our next film that we will be reviewing or viewing will be Cat's Eye. That is by suggestion of Maxwell King, who has his own horror review. I think it's called, I'm, I know for a fact, it's called Maxwell King Horror. Go check out Max. Uh, he reached out to us and uh, he's was encouraging with some of his comments like subscribe and share if you would and be good